My interest was, rather than taking a person with a normal lung and putting them in an unusual environment, like under the water, 80 atmospheres, my idea was that maybe we could take someone that has an abnormal lung and make it better. And the line of thinking there was that when you're a baby, you're in developing in your mother's womb, you're in a fluid environment and your lungs are filled with fluid. And the problem is that sometimes babies are pulling way premature and their lungs aren't developed enough and they have to make a transition from this fluid environment that they're in to breathing a gas environment. And unfortunately, they can't make that transition because their lungs aren't lined with the right kind of biochemical fluids, the structure of the lung isn't developed right. So I just happened to be in a place where these two ideas came together. There's this liquid breathing for diving and then there's this problem that we're having with babies not being able to breathe. And I put those two things together and said, well, let's try taking these premature babies and make them breathe a fluid until their lungs are ready to breathe the gas so they make a transition from one fluid environment to another fluid environment to gas breathing. And basically that's what we did. We started off in, in terms of premature animal studies, lambs that were born prematurely. We would have them breathe this fluid and demonstrated that they could do it very effectively and not have any lung injury or any complications from breathing it. And after we did enough of those kinds of preclinical studies, then we decided that we were going to start some clinical studies. And there were lots of babies that were having great difficulty in breathing in terms of they were born at 24 weeks of gestation, where normally you're born at 40 weeks of gestation. So their lungs aren't developed enough, their bodies aren't developed enough, they can't breathe. And at that time, and this was 1989, we decided that here at Temple, we were going to embark on these first clinical studies of taking the liquids that we were working with, and these liquids are called perfluorochemicals, and they're synthesized compounds which dissolve a lot of oxygen in it and a lot of carbon dioxide so that you can breathe this liquid just as well as you can breathe a gas. And in fact, if you have immature lungs or damaged lungs, you can actually breathe this liquid better than you can breathe a gas. And so that's when we first started doing the clinical studies. And we started with a series of studies in, in premature babies and then worked the way up to pediatric population where kids that had injured lungs and couldn't breathe gas very well and then to adults that had problems with breathing. And so Basically, it started with a concept that was related to diving and underwater research and worked its way into to the medical world. What we really hope is that we're still in a situation where there are lots of patients that aren't doing well. Um, if you look at adult respiratory distress, there's still about 30% of all those patients that get adult respiratory distress that die. And then out of the ones that survive, there's a lot of morbidity in terms of chronic lung disease and neurological complications. Same thing with the pediatric and the neonatal population. There's a very large percentage of people that even though they survive conventional gas ventilation and they stay in an intensive care unit, there's what we call morbidity or problems associated with that. And what I would hope for is that we would have the opportunity to offer this therapy to more patients such that we can reduce that morbidity and have them get through this illness without having the complications that they're seeing.